it seems to just be a fact of reality that that's just the way that customers are motivated. This video is about a marketing strategy that I hate. It's affected you, it's affected me. I'm gonna talk about what it is, why it works, and how to put an end to it so that you don't have to feel taken advantage of anymore. Today I'm going to be talking about penetration pricing, which you've probably encountered in the form of a mailed-in advertisement for a hot, limited-time new deal in your neighborhood when you sign up for the whatever cable company or cell phone service provider. These are prices set for new customers only, and the reason they work, of course, and the reason that they're called penetration pricing is because they penetrate the competition, they often showcase their price juxtaposed against the standard price of the competition to make you think that you're going to be saving lots of money if you get started with them. And of course, they're willing to eat the cost for the first year because they're banking on the future years that you'll spend in that neighborhood. Ultimately, it feels like an awesome deal because you're thinking about how much money you're saving and it's awesome until the price expires and suddenly your bill skyrockets. There is a way around it, however, and in fact, one of the best ways to convey this is through a story that I heard from a friend who I have who is real and will even comment on this video as evidence that he's actually my friend and I don't just sit in a room talking to a camera to people that I don't know all the time. Everybody say hi to Jay. Hi Jay. Uh, Jay lived in New York. He still lives in New York. For six years, he got the introductory rate. And so how did he get the introductory new customer only rate from Time Warner Cable, or at that time, Time Warner Cable and what now became Spectrum? Well, Jay got his introductory rate because every year, right before his price would expire, he would call Time Warner Cable up. And Jay would say, uh, yes, Time Warner Cable, this is Jay, a real friend of Ben's, and I just wanted to call you and tell you that I would like to terminate my uh, service. I'm so sorry to hear that, Jay. Tell me, why are you unsatisfied with Time Warner Cable? Oh, I'm glad you asked, yes. Uh, all year, I've been aware that I have been benefiting from the exclusive price available only to new customers, and since I will very soon become an old customer, I've decided that I can save more money if I transfer my service over to another provider. I'm happy to help you with your request. Before I do, would you like to hear an available offer that might entice you to stay with us? Sure. Tell me about this exclusive offer available only for me. Sure thing. Because you are such a valuable customer, what we can do for you is extend your price for the next year. Is this something you're interested in? Yes, please. I would like this promotion. Thank you very much. And Jay would just repeat this process year after year after year until he just got tired of it, and he called them up to tell them so. Hi, Time Warner Cable. This is Jay. I'm calling because I'd like to terminate my service. I'm sorry to... Yes, you may, and I'll answer. Because every year, I have a standing appointment to call you up and do this whole song and dance where I indirectly ask you to extend my new customer pricing for yet another year. And every year, I have to threaten and take my time to threaten to leave you so that you will do this. And I'm tired of that whole thing. I'd like it to stop. What I would like you to do is give me the new customer pricing forever for the rest of forever, so that I never have to call you again. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't extend the new customer pricing forever. Well, then I'm afraid you can't help me because that is the only thing that will retain me as your customer. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm happy to help you with your request. Before I do, because you are so valuable to us, we would like to offer the new customer pricing for one more year. No, no, no. Like, how is that okay? That is a dishonor to the way businesses should interact with clients. It doesn't motivate 
the kind of behavior that we want to see, customer loyalty and like happy relationships between clients and customer service. Instead, it's this trap that fools us, that that deceives us into getting on board with something that we actually won't like using. And that's not how businesses are supposed to work. So, in preparation for this video, I did a little bit of research and I searched for things like, why does penetration pricing work? And are there any cable companies that don't use penetration pricing? And how do you beat penetration pricing? And honestly, I didn't find that great of a solution for it. There are several tips on how to negotiate with your service provider in order to lower your bill, but it seems to just be a fact of reality that that's just the way that customers are motivated no, no. So the best article that I found is a Forbes article that goes ahead and says it the way that it is. Despite what we want to believe that companies care about customer loyalty, the fact is they care more about acquiring customers. And to that end, this kind of pricing is going to continue. So the only way that you can get it to stop, and this article goes on to outline like so many others do that this is another method of negotiating your bill is to tell them explicitly what it is you want and what it is you're willing to pay for. So get on the phone and say, hey, I'm looking for a company that rewards customer loyalty. Is customer loyalty important to you? And you should be elevated to the next level of customer service representatives where you might actually be able to have a real talk and you might actually get some answers that are valuable. Now look, I, I found other great stories. I will put some more links in the description. If you have a technique that you use for talking with whatever service about how you're being billed, will you please share it with me? And what I'm going to do is, now listen, I currently live in Japan on a military base. I don't exactly uh, pay a phone bill the way that I used to. Uh, it's kind of different. We have something called <laughs> Verify, with well, Mirror Cable, there it is. A Mirror Cable, and it's kind of like just a thing that you deal with. It's Anyway, uh, I do have a home. It's in San Diego, and I have AT&T, and uh, I'm going to call them up. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna negotiate. I'm gonna see what happens. I will let you know in the comments how my negotiation goes. And if it's really interesting, maybe I'll make another video. If you like this one, will you give it a thumbs up? If you've got something helpful to say, any advice for me when I negotiate with AT&T, go ahead and drop a comment. Or, you know, other people read those things too. So you can even do it before I've uh, announced the results of my negotiation. And um, if you like this video, join us next time where I'll talk about how to shop for tables at thrift stores. Because my office is off the chain. Take care. Bye-bye.